For the past couple of weeks, we've been exploring the beautiful area of Peninsular Malaysia, discovering jungles, historic towns, and the Asian megacity of Kuala Lumpur. Now, we're heading to the top of the country to experience a must-see adventure location for any visitor to this fabulous country. We were looking forward to a slice of paradise, but that wasn't exactly what we found. One of the best things about traveling in Malaysia is that it's quite a small country. So after four hours, we were right at the top and ready to take a boat. The state of Penang is right at the top of the Malaysian Peninsula, not far from the Thai border. Penang Island has been classed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's where most visitors head to, and we heard that there is a lot of adventure to be had here. There are two ways you can get to Penang Island from the mainland. You can either drive across on that big bridge, or you can get a ferry. Who wouldn't take the ferry? It's fun. This ferry was probably the cheapest mode of transport that we have taken on our whole trip. Our next accommodation, however, was not. So this is our place that we're staying in Penang. It's a little bit different from the other uh, rundown places that we've stayed at so far. It's a lot more space in here. It's a little bit rundown, but um, we have a balcony and a beautiful view. Is this room better? Room's much better. Look at the view. Got a pool and the beach nearby. Gorgeous. And just the space is perfect for us because we've been doing a lot of work and planning for the visas and the route for our next um, big trip. So it's been perfect. Air conditioning, which was needed here because it's really, really, really hot. And this place is only $10 each a night. So it's more expensive than the ones we have been staying at, which have been around $4, but $10 a night for this is pretty good, I think. Yeah. 
our first night in Penang Island and we're going to see what there is for dinner. We just came across a uh, local market, food market, so we're going to try and find some Malaysian food and some treats as well. Good options, I don't even know what to have. Three dollar. So I ended up choosing the mie goreng, which is only five ringgit, which is about $1.20. Bargain, it looks delicious. Yummy, but oh, good. Spicy, but good. <laughs> I went for a laksa, my favourite food in Malaysia. Absolutely stunning soup. This one costs about one dollar and five cents, which is all right in my books. Let's see how it tastes. Oh, hang on. Gonna do the um, the awkward part. The picking up noodles with a uh, and with a little bit of this, a little bit of this. Mm. Okay. So good, very fishy, but fishy in a good way. Yum. So we heard about this Malaysian dessert called Ice Kacang, and apparently this store here in the food market has one of the best ones in Penang, so we're going to try and taste it. I left enough room for this because it looks huge, check it out. Interesting is the right like, the word. Let's have some beans and sweet corn and syrup. Every bite is a party in your mouth. It doesn't really matter which country we are visiting, we always gravitate towards eating street food or at local food markets just like this one. It's not just that the food is much cheaper here, but there is something about eating outside of a restaurant, alongside the locals, that really gives you that authentic cultural immersion, which makes travel just that little bit more rewarding. With food this good, we were only really eating twice a day, and in the afternoons, snacking on tropical fruit. I don't know about where you live, but none of these fruits were found in the lunch boxes at the schools where we grew up. They are all delicious and a great way to ensure that we still get our much needed essential vitamins whilst we're out and about. This one is rose apple, and that one, langsat. Oh, and don't forget those fuzzy balls called rambutans. Probably our favourite one, though, was the one affectionately called the Queen of Fruits, Mangosteen. My all-time favourite tropical fruit was a little hard to come by. It's massive and called jackfruit. 
last jackfruit. <clears throat> Notice that we left the king of fruits, durian, off this list, mainly because it tastes like sh. Even though we were mainly here to work this week, it was great to have the beach right on the doorstep of the hotel for a morning stroll. At the end of the beach was a floating mosque and we awoke every morning to the call to prayer and views of fishermen prepping for the day's work. Blue crab? Yeah. We call it a flower crab. This mud here on the beach is so thick. Like you wonder how any of these boats actually make it off the beach into the ocean for them to fish. I mean, they don't have tractors here. They're not pulling these boats down to the sea line with like mechanical means, this is all done by hand. Literally pushing yourself and an entire boat through the mud with a stick. I hope these guys catch some fish because they seriously deserve to. It's quite interesting walking up and down the beach here. You can see the contrast in lives that where all the fishermen huts are right on the shoreline and in the background are these massive hotels and it just shows what a change there must have been in, in the fishermen's lives here because as Penang has exploded and the tourism industry has exploded here and all of these hotels have changed the skyline for forever but not only that it's also changed their livelihoods because we read in the local paper that some of the fishermen are now complaining to the local government that they're going out to fish and they're coming back with like two or three prawns, shrimps and very, very small catches. And it's actually got to the point that some of them aren't even going out anymore because they're spending more in the petrol and gasoline that they need to catch the fish than they can recoup from what they actually bring back, which is very, very disheartening. The main reason for that is because of the pollution that's in the, in the ocean now, which is coming from up the coastline and around Penang Island. The fishermen are reporting to the local newspaper that when they pull their anchors, it's coming up with black, foul, stenching kind of um, silt from the bottom, which never used to happen. And if you look at the ocean here, it is brown. And obviously it's not surprising that the fish don't want to live there and that they've migrated further offshore. Uh, this is another example of humanity exploding in population and not looking after the environment. When will it change? I like to start my day with a stroll and if I can get away with it, an environmental rant. I'm also partial to a bowl of cereal, but that's kind of hard to come by in Malaysia. Their breakfast is a little different. Nasi Padang is a variety pot of spicy and intensely flavoured assortment. It's not porridge by any stretch of the imagination, but it is delicious. However, Leah did struggle to adjust to mixed spicy fish curries for breakfast. But you can't really blame her. At least I have great copied tarak in Malaysia. The best way to get around in Southeast Asia is definitely by bike, your own bike. So with zero proof of actually being able to ride one or even license to, we got a scooter for a few days to buzz about the island. Rocking it on the back of the bike. So it's about 
35 ringgit to hire a scooter or a motorbike in Penang. How much is that in dollars? Four dollars? Nine, sorry, nine dollars. That's nine dollars to hire the bike for the day. And it only costs about one dollar to fill up in petrol. So it's pretty cheap, pretty cheap day out. It's been an adventure. So we started off today with um, uh, my, the backpack uh, at the back of me. So I had that backpack on and when we stopped we found out that somebody had tried to get in. They tried to, obviously we were waiting at a stoplight like this, they came behind me and undid the zipper. So we learnt our lesson very quickly and now we have the bag in front of us on the floor. This is actually not hooked on, I'm glad you said that because it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't hooked on. Shit. So that's a lesson, don't uh, have your backpack on your back. Like this fool. That's no, 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 no. Like this, yes. Almost lost my passport in that little exchange. And my girlfriend. Well, you look cute in a helmet, babe. about 25 minutes out of Georgetown to come and see this temple. It is called the Snake Temple because there are real life snakes in the temple as you go in. You're not protected by them, they're just hanging around. So uh, let's go and uh, see the snakes. They look very alive, do they? first glance they look like they're fake because they're not moving and they're just sitting there but there are actual real pit vipers that are just hanging out in the temple. In the back of the temple here there's like a, um, an outside enclosure where there are some snakes in the trees and it's kind of closed off um, and we've just spotted a mouse, a little tiny mouse in there so I think they are just fill this little area with mice for the uh, snakes to feed on. It's really sad to see him stuck there. There's no way for him to get out. Poor mouse. He's literally an arm's reach away and he's a big one. Like, you just never get that in the Western world. It's totally dangerous. I wonder how many accidents they have here at this temple. There's got to have been a, at least a few stupid tourists that stuck their finger in and got bitten. I'm not doing that. This place is really cool, apart from all the snakes. Don't like snakes, but the temple is really nice out here. I like it. You ever, you ever touched a wild, a wild snake? Yeah. You ever been attacked? I like holding snakes that are like pets, but wild vipers that are venomous, no. Snake temple, check. I'm scared of walking around here now just in case there's like vipers everywhere. I went to the toilet before just here and I'm like, vipers in the toilet. Yeah, they are literally hanging everywhere. So you yeah. kind of have to look up under every low beam you go through to see if there's a viper staring at your face. Leah's having our first go on a motorbike right here. Learning on a little uh, 125cc Honda automatic scooter so that one day she can travel around the world on a motorbike. She's doing great so far, she's a natural. I think I'm almost ready to get on the back with her. Can I hit to ride? Sure. Can I get on the back? It's a lot harder with someone on the back. Um, it's a lot heavier. Oh, yeah. Slowly, oh my God. slowly, slowly. Oh, 
one big loop first of all. Whilst we were out on the bike, we found some more secluded parts of the island. A little piece of Malaysia paradise just for us. We've been in Malaysia for about two weeks now and we've experienced a lot of Malaysia's city culture. We've even experienced a bit of the rainforest scene and uh, eaten a lot of Malaysian food and different types of food. So now we are in Penang Island and we are going to see the beaches because there's a lot of things to do here in Penang Island and one of those things is the beach. Unfortunately, most of the coast in Penang continued to disappoint. We couldn't believe that even the beaches here in this national park were so polluted. We decided to hike around to the least populated part of the island to see if the beach there was any better. This beach is definitely nicer than the one where we're staying. Still, though, look at the water. Why? This is actually quite a nice beach. Look at this. Beautiful. This beach isn't as clear as what we thought it was going to be. The water's um, pretty dirty, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's pretty murky. And there's a venomous jellyfish in here, so we can't swim, unfortunately, but... I'm not sure that you'd want to swim in this water. It does not look clean. No, the, one of the beaches that we saw coming into this national park was absolutely filthy. Um, very polluted, dirty, uh, so I don't really feel good about swimming in this ocean. This national park is right on the edge of Penang Island, so it's far away from the kind of... Um, industrial areas, but there are quite a lot of people that live on the island. So it's not surprising that in Southeast Asia that they haven't managed to um, look after the pollution and that the water has ended up looking like this. But it's a real shame to be honest with you, yeah. because I know what this should look like and it should be tropical, gorgeous, beautiful water that you can snorkel in. Even with some questionable environmental issues, Malaysia was still a fantastic place to explore, and it definitely revived our appetite for adventure. It's given us the space to discuss the finer details of how we're going to make our overlanding project possible, and importantly, the space to nourish our relationship after months apart. We now feel restored and ready to return to Jersey and tackle the final stages of the construction of our new home. There is, however, one more thing that happened in that jungle, but you guessed it, that is a story for next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Whilst we've been in Malaysia, we've also been doing our route planning for the Round the World uh, adventure and big trip that's coming up. Yeah, also, I'm now headed back to the UK to continue the build of Boomerang. This is the last phase of building our home before we take off on this huge adventure. Very excited to wrap that up and share you, with you guys the uh, exclusive uh, process of doing that. So we will be releasing more content to the Combi crew. Um, like, Look out for a live video coming up very soon from the build, in the middle of the build, and also more 360 tours 
with you guys. If you want to get access to all this stuff, uh, we give it out to our Combi crew members who are supporting the production because without them, we wouldn't be able to make this travel series. So we are eternally grateful and we spend a lot, a lot of time making this awesome content for you guys. So uh, thank you for supporting us and we will see you in the next one.